I began to get these really deep, strong, just a sense of knowing or an urge about something. And I'd think, is that you, God? And then I would step out, I'd act on it, and oftentimes I'd find it was. And it was so exciting. And I realised that this was going to be quite an adventure with God. Um, as I began to read the Bible, I saw that life was about choices, actually. And God wanted to speak with us, and uh, he'd made me, he created me. And so the way he talked to me was going to be different how he talked to others. And I just said to God, you know, I love you so much. What I'm going to do is when I have a um, urge or a sense of this is you wanting me to do something, um, then I'm actually just going to step out. I'm going to move forward on this. And so um, you, I need you to either stop this or, you know, open the door or shut the door. And that was how I lived. And I had amazing adventures with God, really, really outrageous things and crazy things. Then one day when my son was young, I'd been a Christian a year, I guess, and I was hanging out washing on the line. And then I saw these very sharp images, like a photograph. One was of a very wide, shallow waterfall. And one of them was of an island. And, and so I knew I was in a plane, but I had a sense of knowing I'm going overseas. And I remember I dropped everything and I thought, wow, that's really unusual. And about six months later, I got a letter from uh, someone in Zimbabwe and the postage stamp was of Victoria Falls. So I was so excited. I was like, yes, I'm going overseas. I'm going to Africa. I had a love of Africa. So being naive and a young Christian without a lot of experience, I rushed down to the local travel agent and said to him with great confidence and enthusiasm, I, I need a ticket. I need tickets for Zimbabwe. Um, I'm a Christian and God's sending me to Africa. And this man just looked. And it actually took 10 years before I got to go on that plane, fly overseas and go to Africa. So I was very naive. I didn't, I lived in a small town. I didn't know missionaries really. And I'd read a book by um, Hudson Taylor and he says where the Lord guides, he provides. So I thought, well, that's easy. We'll just sell the house, we'll buy the tickets, go for the first school and you will just provide. Well, that's fabulous. So I didn't give it a lot of thought. So we went to South Africa, trained at YWAM. Well, I said to everyone, we're just going to be here three months, then we're going off to Zimbabwe. <laughs> 16 years later, <laughs> I left. And, you know, the cost of living rose a lot in South Africa when I arrived. It was just at the end of apartheid, and so there was a lot of unrest, and then everything skyrocketed. So then it began to dawn on me. I watched other people had all these church, home church supporters, and they had all these strategies. <laughs> You know, I'm here for life and, and I've only got a couple of friends providing. I remember going to the ATM and I put my card in, nothing. Next day go, put my card in, nothing. And I remember I was walking along the road crying in Musenberg and can't even feed the boys tonight, I don't have food. And I was disappointed that I wasn't this woman of faith in the face of adversity and all that. But anyway, I got home and there on the doorstep was a box and it had a carton of eggs, it had bacon, it had everyone, you know, everything there. And I remember saying, oh gosh, God, I'm sorry my faith is so fickle. When everything's fabulous, I'm all bubbly and happy and when it's not, I start to get anxious. It wasn't easy, it wasn't. The first seven years were very hard, but um, he always came through, always came through.